All right. I thought in my lifetime I would never see same a rollerblading and skateboarding in the same video. Yeah. Not, and, not to mention a collab. And like make it look cool. Totally. Like you know what I mean? Like enjoyable to watch. For the times they are changing. Before we uh jump into all that stuff about the Nine Club and Frasher and all those kind of things. Uh, let's talk about the Blade Cup, which took place uh, the other weekend. Arguably one of the biggest events in rollerblading at the moment. You've had 300 skaters there from over 20 different countries and the uh, whole thing looked like a complete hoot, man. We'll go over the results in a bit, but did you see the amount of brands sponsoring the thing? Pretty sure I've seen Harvester in there, Woolworths, British Hairways, PG Trips, Tanner Reef, Lord of the Bins, one ring to remove it all. Everybody was sponsoring this thing, man. As with the last one, I've seen a couple of jokes about the size of the course, which were like, you know, fairly amusing. What is this? A center for ants? Yeah, maybe it would have been cool to fill the space out a little bit more, like a few more interesting obstacles or something like that. I'm always a big fan of like introducing gunge into skating, like a gunge pool that you've got to jump over or do a grind over. Like they could have poured some gunge into that little bin they had on the course, or like, I mean, at least pour something into it, like, could have filled it up with marbles, something like that. You know, if somebody knocks it over, like, marbles everywhere, complete chaos, but then as part of penance, like, part of their run, they have to go back and, like, collect all the marbles and then try and continue doing some more tricks. And that is for the rest of the comp, by the way. Got all those marbles in their pockets. Imagine trying to do a grind or a spin with, like, marbles in your pocket. <laughs> this would be some madness, man. I'm not too fussed there wasn't loads of enormous ramps there. You've got, like, uh, Fees or the World Roller Games, so that kind of thing. And it certainly, like, didn't dampen my excitement for it. I still was trying to stay up, like, all night, like, trying to catch any kind of live stream to see what was going on in the action. I'd fall asleep, wake up in the middle of the night, a little bit of a panic, oh, what's going on, who's won the thing, like, burning my retinas off, trying to look at my screen in the middle of the night, like, ooh. And in all honesty, I wasn't even really bothered about who won, I just wanted to see, like, more footage. It's that, it's that kind of excitement. Surely one of the goals is to create an excitement event, loads of atmosphere that not only, like, spectators want to come along to, and enjoy but also like the pro skaters and stuff like that i mean people moaned about it being small last time but this year was the most well attended loads of really great skaters there like from 20 different countries like i said before the most people ever so if it was that dire and that bad people just wouldn't go like why are people still going there if it's like if the size of this course or the course is like such a major problem i bet you the next one's just as big or bigger i've seen somebody trying to compare the blading cup course to the dime glory challenge event <laughs> oh that's a bit unfair isn't it it's a bit of a daft comparison man like call me Scylla Black surprise, surprise. the one with the absolutely outrageous budget was much bigger that event had like ramps well a course that was evolving as it went on it was getting bigger and bigger and they had pyrotechnics and everything do you reckon they had the same budget like it's hardly like a fair comparison is it that's like comparing a sunday league team to a premier league team or comparing like sunday league football to to the world cup like going up to the sunday league team and going well, how come you don't have a ninety thousand capacity stadium what we've only got like 300 fans and only half of them turn up each week like I don't think we can really afford a 90,000 capacity stadium. We don't have the budget. I once played a football match in Alderney. The pitch was uphill, the goals were wonky, and it had a concrete <laughs> cricket crease in like a part of the pitch. And we had a great time, man, because every time you go near that cricket crease, because you had metal studs on, you'd like skid and slide, or you didn't want to get tackled there. Like, oh man, it was mad. And we were trying to actually like destroy the goals because they were so like wobbly and rickety. You hit off that crossbar, the whole thing was start, like wobbling and shaking. It was sick, we had a great time, like, people made the most of it. You could even spin it and be like, the more minimal course, like, pushes the pros to do, like, something a little bit more interesting, something a bit different. It's like, you're kind of used to seeing skating in, like, bigger comps like that, bigger ramps, or, like, in, in skate parks and stuff like that. Like, it's almost harder to pick a winner. So when, when you're looking at, like, the fees or something like that, you're thinking, yeah, at Atkinson's probably going to have a Stormer, the Abbey, somebody like that. With this one, you're like, 
don't really know like some of the street skaters like they might have a chance in here like people who were like super tech they might have a, like a good shout in it somebody also posted up a joke about being able to buy the blading cup course from like argus in some sort of special deal now i actually wouldn't knock the blading cup if they did this themselves i like put together a little kit like kind of flat bar P rail, little launch out, something like that, and they actually sold it themselves as their course. That would be sick, man. They could even do like a little tech deck version of it. Imagine if them and Weekend did a tech deck course as part of the collaboration. Mate, that would have been that would have been unreal. Also, it might make skating seem a little bit more attainable and accessible for like younger kids. Like they look at that course and be like, do you know what? I think I can get up that ramp. I might be able to get a, like a grind on that little ledge. Like. I might be able to actually enter this comp, you know? That's gonna motivate them more by then going to like some enormous course and being like, well, this is out of my league. It's nice to watch, but this is well out of my league. Like how many years do I have to train to get to that point? Which is not like a bad thing, but you know, easy access. Imagine being like, oh my goodness, next year I could enter the Blading Cup. <laughs> so the results? Don Bruce took third, he was skating around fully charged up, like he does in his head, it's just riding a wave of energy that seems like it's erratic, but he makes it look controlled and fully intentional, which just like shows off his unreal ability. Unfortunately, Don picked up an injury during the final run, doing this mad, no place like home, foot tap disaster top sole, wishing him a speedy recovery. There's no rail like home, there's no rail like home. Young Jay Yoon came second and arguably could have taken the win, he was consistent, smooth, stylish, and had a heap of bangers thrown in there as well. And they always won the thing. Again, consistent, clean, topping it off with a top acid to Ali top acid Dinka. <laughs> Daniela Salgado won the women's street. I seen the Bodega Boys very own Alex Ryerson won the AMs. Essel Choi and Mario Pasilla tied for first in the under 18 street. And Randy Spicer was charging around like he's going for a new pro skate or something. He's had the wheels off dead and he's thinking, yeah, mate, a few more solid tricks, a few more like edits or something. I've got a boot here. He looked like he was actually buzzing off of everything. Do you know what? I actually value seeing people have a completely buzzing time over like any massive ramps or street courses. Like things like Randy or like the kids just absolutely having a blast that's way more valuable like uh, to me like uh than like enormous like <laughs> quarter pipes and stuff like that i can imagine john sat in the office working out the finances he's like woof ruck of money into the clark ring let's hope that goes well ruck of money into this weekend skateboarding thing that goes well right this is what left of the budget and then you've got somebody just screaming out, you need a bigger quarter pipe mate oi spend some money on the ramps <laughs> Biggest attendance so far. Loads of trade stores, all this. Nah, mate. <laughs> bigger ramps, bigger ramps. Going into it a little bit more with the Blade Cup, it's not just like the competition, is it? It's a whole event. It's like a mini festival, which Rashard captured like pretty well in his uh, free Blading Cup videos. So go and check those out. It provides a stage for companies to launch their new gear. Not only did you have clothing, products, merch, and all that kind of thing, you had little P-Rails out there and people having sessions. You had the Mighty Ducks Arena. You had the Skate Mobility event. It provides a really good stage for companies to like launch new gear and display their products and show their wares. I'll go through the new products that cropped up there later in the video. The main like event, the main attraction like product wise and new feature wise was obviously them skates in the weekend collaboration. I've done a video of this like going into this fairly intensively so like I won't completely go over that again but like them skates are definitely smart releasing like a couple of bright coloured skates recently. They were so easy to spot in any of the footage like yeah them skates are either them skates are either oh he's got them skates on mate smart things kicked off with a video premiere on the third which looked like it was packed to the rafters man people were spilling out into the street grant yan sora ceo of weekend and other weekend heads were in attendance i've seen a fair few people chirping about how weekend seemed to be a bit quiet about the whole thing and they were like oh why are they not posting anything about it well it seems like the strategy was to like you know keep momentum going after the blake up when they uh, dropped the skit well, Welcome to Alan Gelfin High. This was the first bit of footage they dropped online and it's absolutely rammed full of skateboarders. Like 
everyone from the current crop to icons and not just like the weekend team either. If you take it at a basic level and you don't really know too much about skateboarding, maybe say you didn't even know much about rollerblading, you'd still be like, oh yeah, that's pretty well produced, or, like seems quite funny, seems like it might be a reference to like uh, an American high school film or something like that. You could tell there's quality there, but then when you realise that there's like a ridiculous, utterly ridiculous names from skateboarding in it, it becomes like something else, it becomes like even more unreal. So it's set in Alan Gelfenheim, which is actually the guy who created the Ollie. It starts off with the weekend team, then you've got Jack Moran from Rip and Dip. Grant actually started Rip and Dip with this guy, but then he left. You've got Skate Talk Bob in there, who's well known for like his videos and tearing people apart. <laughs> When I was very young, I developed this disease called a sense of humor. And it's something I've had to live with my whole life. And a lot of people wouldn't know what that's like because you don't have this disease. You got the Baker team, the band are even playing a tune that is associated with Baker. That's pretty mad. You got Kevin Long Spanky in there, who's an icon. Then there's a little jab at Palace, which is pretty funny. It seems like 90% of it is making jokes at the skateboarding industry, like little jabs here and there. They show Frog as children due to their childlike designs. It actually features a cameo from uh, John Julio's sons. They poke fun at hockey and FA. You've got the welcome team being carried by Norla Vasconcelos. You've got a shod wear in there who is massive. Chandler Burton, the professor who's been around for yonks, loves a bit of tech. The police officer is Rick Howard who started Lakai. You've got Vincent Valerez. You've got the mythical Heath Kirchart who normally like keeps himself to himself and like barely does interviews or anything like that. So this is wild that he's in there the primitive team, and then you've got the bladers, who we all know. I fully recommend going to watch Safety Grab's video on the thing. He goes into loads of details and uh, nobody has done it as good as him so far. The Alan Gelfand High video skit has been done like outstandingly well. There's obviously a lot of care and attention put into this thing, a lot of effort, and um, those sentiments have been echoed in the skateboarding community, even on things like uh, the Nine Club. Grant and those guys Grant are Sura. incredible. Yeah, they did a great job, man. funny dude it was just written perfectly it was great yeah. it was great i want to see them make this a show there's been a few people framing like the enthusiasm for this as like people sucking up to skateboarding bend the knee and join me we will leave the world a better place than we found it i mean obviously i can't say for sure if that's not the case because some people might genuinely be doing that might be like oh please skateboarding like us but I think for the majority, it's just enthusiasm like you would have for something that you like. For instance, if uh, a brand drops a skate, puts it on their Insta, the comments are always full of like flames and like, yeah, uh, that looks really sick and stuff like that because people like it. I think like, regardless of who is like involved in this project, people just like that there's a skate, there's like something going on, it's like cool, it's like definitely gonna garner some attention from like uh, outside eyes or like people we're not normally tapped into. I'm not looking for validation from skateboarding or anything like that really. But when something you're passionate about has skin in the game, it's nice to see like the other side of it, the other people involved are like as passionate or like treat it with as much care as you are or give as much effort. This was then followed up with a full video, skateboarding x rollerblading. It starts with Kyle, the owner of Brain Dead, who is actually friends with both John and Grant. It then kicks off with a Naked Gun Police Squad reference, which is a really sick nod. This is actually a nod in itself to uh, M Squad from uh, the 1950s, 1960s, which is a bit meta, man. There's footage where people are skating the same spot Sports, where they trade and do the other bit. There's even a hippie jump on the skates. The music is really good, especially like the REO Speedwagon, Can't Fight This Feeling with the hugging animation. That was ridiculous, man. Jumping in quickly, that was actually one of my trends for uh, 2022. More hugs, more more embraces after tricks. The video is great, lots of cool, interesting skating in there. Uh, and it's a decent and fun representation of everybody. Again, actually, the Nine Club gave it props. Like, Dwayne Steezus McMurray talks about skating with Broskow back in the day. We had a dude in KC, Alex Broskow. He was a pro rollerblader. Yeah, we're always kicking see. with our crew and shit. Yeah. yeah. Another interesting takeaway from that Nine Club video was that they mentioned they'd already seen the Them Skates and Clarks collab. That was on their radar. So that just, like, 
speaks to like what that, that collaboration has actually done. It's also somehow managed to get rollerblading in Thrasher. You've got a picture in there of Alex Crosshow. Surely, surely that is the first time rollerblading has been shown in that mag in like a good light. I think the people who are saying, oh, it's not going to change anything are in the same bracket as the people that think like, oh yeah, this is going to change absolutely everything and straight away. Like, No, I just think it's like the step in the right direction. I think it's just like a creative endeavor that, you know, might help some kid who is getting into rollerblading have a little bit of an easier life, which I fully back. Obviously, because it was a blading cut, there was loads of other video drops as well. You've got Colin and Sean's Spaceman 2, which I don't know how many people noticed, but it's actually Colin doing the rap at the beginning. On round two, Spaceman, it's the brothers who love from depths of the basement. I've been saying this all year. People need to get into singing and rapping over their own videos. After the rap, the video feels like it's 100 clips per minute in like the best possible way. That should actually be a metric in videos, CPMs. Like the whole thing makes me really excited about skating. It plays into things that I personally like to see, like insane technical abilities presented with like conviction and style in a way that like you're not completely lost in it. Although I would recommend watching it in slow motion to take it all in. I'm a particular fan of one footed trips and this thing just absolutely ripped through the quota that I need in a video. Their adoption or creation of like new styles of skating and the furtherment of them is incredible. It feels like they're constantly evolving and giving skating a new look. I rate this video five bags of crisps. That's a multi bag. The video also coincides with the launch of their new clothing, which uh, Sean Santa Maria actually helped design. Really sick to see people calling on rollerbladers' other talents. Roadhouse Tokyo released Mental Sketch. Loads of good skating there, particularly good section from uh, Yuto Suzuki. I just like the way he skates, man. Really creative, really good style. Just got something about him that I'm like, I'm really drawn to. Make sure you go and check that one out. Another big one that's dropped from the fifth floor crew, which also coincided with like a, a new dead wheel, is Spokes. <laughs> yeah. This ring is utterly brilliant, just like its predecessor. Incredible skating, beautiful spots, filmed absolutely immaculately. It captures all that like amazing feeling of a crew vibe. I mean, it ticks all the boxers. Not only motivates you to go out skating, but like shows you different ways of skating, like inspires you to maybe try other things, look at the city in a different way. And if you're getting a little bit sentimental, the whole thing's just absolutely heartwarming and like shows the joys of rollerblading. Jeremy Soderberg and crew have dropped Slippery Slope. This is a follow up to uh, Up To No Good. I had kind of thought, the crew had been a little bit quiet. Obviously, they were working hard on this one. It's got all the usual suspects in it. Top quality skating. I always rate what they're doing, man. It's always good to see them putting out stuff. Go and check it out. Absolutely spoiled for choice when it comes to the videos. There's been loads of them, man. There's also been China Wildstall. So she's had a, a third promo wheel from Chroma. Make sure you get your hands on that thing and check out the promo in it. She's just really, really good, man. Like, very stylish very consistent super clean also big billy merton big billy the balance merton he's got a taking flight that's just come out with a uh, capital rollers man loads of really interesting switch ups in there like definitely go and check that one out as well anthony potier is flying around the blading cup course he's got himself two new pro uh, ufr skates you can either get it in black or white you know that little bumper panel near the front of the skate does anybody else think they look a little bit like the climbing wall things man you should actually uh, make them interchangeable so you can get like different colors and different shapes maybe go to your local climbing wall and just unscrew one from the wall and screw it to your skate or go the other way around get the skates stick them up on the climbing wall and see if anybody notices more socks and i'm, I'm definitely here for it these might be one of the best ones so far actually the mesmer flame socks mate get them on Make it look like your feet are on fire as you're burning around. Skating icon and style master Dominic Sigona has got a new line of t-shirts out. It, it says uh, Mantis style, which is actually something that I'd said in one of my videos about his skating. They heard that, they ran with it and chucked it on the t-shirt, man. I like, sick. I was totally buzzing when I found out about that one. Definitely make sure you go and buy one of those. Martina got a new wheel from Gods with her dog on it. The ladies have got two collab wheels with undercover, 60 millimeter and 80 millimeter. And Stephen Babcock has got a wheel from Moonshine with some superb packaging. Moonshine have also made a very limited run of sole plates for the uh, Mesmers, which looks sick. Did you see the street course at the World Roller Games, mate? It was pretty intense with rails or something like that. 
my cousin sent me a message asking if I'd seen it and was like, that is the kind of thing I would build in like, you know, Tony Hawk Park Builder just absolutely rails everywhere, man. It looked insane, but like a lot of good fun though. Rosies have dropped the new M12 skate called Pomegranate. A few people mentioned that it looked quite similar to the Brain Dead skate that was released earlier in the year. The counter to that is Rosies used that kind of effect first at the beginning of 2019, but then they stopped using it completely for whatever reason. In June or July of 2021, them skates released the brain dead collaboration this was a different kind of effect and this time it was used on the boot in blue and white then in may of this year they released their second collab skate this time in like a maroon and cream kind of color in the same year rosie's brought back that smoke effect with the uto pro skate which i think is a stretch to compare them like the color yes they are both blue but the uto's also have like silver and a yellow one there but then like a month or two later you've got ones that the colorway is definitely quite similar and it's not like you know solid colorways that are bound to happen like when it's two colors used in the same combination that's when you start to question it a little bit but logic would say oh you know those two colors just work together like bringing back the effect and using similar color combinations makes it hard to deny the similarities honestly I don't think it's a massive deal at all. Like, it's just crack. People are just gonna make their comments. Nothing's really gonna happen about that. Those people aren't gonna buy it, that's about it. Anybody who like likes the skate, likes colorway, like the skate, maybe the skate M12 fits in better, they're gonna go, oh, sick. Like, <laughs> I might have even fancied that brain dead one, but this one fits me better. So it doesn't really matter too much. It's just like, you're just opening yourself up to that comparison like why do that like why bother like just do something completely different like like i said before i don't think it's a massive deal or anything like that really i just like i just wonder why big thank you to all my patreons you can join them for as little as three pound a month i've got a rock a new merch out so make sure you check that link in the description here's two videos you can watch cheers again see you again soon spotty dog